different. Every day, different. That's what keeps pulling us back again and again. Promise of something new, something exciting. The promise of memories we'll keep forever. Fishing is a simple pleasure, really. One that makes us feel connected, makes us feel alive. And when your line tightens and your rod bends, it doesn't matter if you're a six-year-old or a tournament pro. That buzz of excitement hits us all the same way. It's the moment we live for. More than 50 years ago, we wanted to change the way people fish. Moving off the shoreline to where we knew the fish were larger and much more fun to catch on light tackle. So we gave fishermen the ability to see individual fish under the boat. Ever since the little green box, Lawrence has been driven to bring innovative products that provide real benefits to anglers. Today, Lawrence continues to build on its heritage of innovation and enhance its reputation for success, helping regular folks catch more fish and tournament pros capture more championships. It's a fact. More pro anglers count on Lawrence sonar and chart plotter products than any other brand. Folks at home. By a long shot. Yeah. And as you might expect, there's a darn good reason for that. You know, I remember the first time I ever caught a bass on an artificial lure. I was 12 years old in the Pocono Mountains. I walked to the end of the dock. I threw a topwater lure out, twitched it a couple times, and a three-pound bass came up and exploded on this thing. My heart was pounding. I was breathing heavy. The minute I landed that fish, it was the most exciting thing that ever happened to me up to that point in my life. That's the reason I got hooked in fishing. And that's the reason 20 years later. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fish Tech Live. Uh, this is Season 2, Episode 10. Uh, tonight, guys, we are talking hardware. I know the show is predominantly all about charts, and that's what we concentrate on. But without the hardware, what can we do? We can do nothing. Why do we choose Lawrence? Because everybody else can't do what Lawrence does. It's a fact. We can argue about it. You can... Go keyboard warrior, you can do whatever you want. I'm telling you now, Lawrence is the leader when it comes to chart plotters by far. There isn't even a close second, not even close. Um, one day will that change? Yes, it probably will. But guys, tonight we're going to look at hardware. And it's a very, very exciting evening and I'm going to tell you why. Because things have just changed. The game has changed. Oh, I don't want to use that phrase, game changer. It's, it's so abused and it's, it's like blessed and oh, I don't want to go down that road. But um, the, the things are changing uh, big time. And uh, we, we're going to look at, at, at the hardware. Um, we're going to do some comparisons. I'd like to hear from you guys. I see quite a few guys have already joined us tonight. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome. Um, please, uh, good evening, Johan, uh, Malcolm. Good evening, Malcolm. Uh, please, guys, don't hold back. If you if you if you find I'm rattling on and you and I've missed something or you want to ask something or you want to zoom in on something, please let me know and I'll stop and we will talk about that. That's the beauty of a live show, guys. I just want to remind you about something. Unfortunately, the streaming on Facebook is only at 720p, so it's not the greatest of resolution. However, tomorrow morning, I will be uploading to YouTube the full HD version of tonight's show. So you can watch it at your leisure. Um, yeah, no stress whatsoever. Um, good evening, Carl. Yes, <laughs> Carl and I have just got off the phone uh, just now and yeah, uh, yeah, good evening, Carl. Hello. Um, so guys, um, let's let's get going. What has happened in the world of hardware and, and electronics? Everybody's bringing out new stuff. Garmin recently brought out the live scope on their pan optics. It was a great upgrade from what I can see from the old pan optics. 
the old panoptics to me was something that said, well done, buddy. Uh, look at the fish that you've just caught. It didn't help me. I've already f caught the fish. I found the fish. Now it tells me, well done. No, that's not good to me. Um, but the live scope. Wow, guys, that is really, really awesome. I started getting um, a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out, when I saw those, those videos. And guess what? We have the brand new Live. Why is it called Live? Let's see if I can try and get that in there. Why is it called HDS Live? It's a feature coming soon. Can you see? Uh, I'm trying to get it there. Can you see there? Live site coming soon. Guys, that's the business. That's the business. No more fear of missing out. We're going to have to wait. Apparently, it's only going to be here in a couple of months' time. But, uh, wow, um, I, I can't wait to get my hands on that transducer and give it a test and uh, uh, get a couple of eggs to swim past that transducer for me and uh, see what uh, some bass look like there. So, uh, very, very exciting from a hardware per perspective. So, guys, what I've got with me tonight, I've already shown you, and we're going to unbox it right here. It's not going to be an unboxing show. You know, we go through the manuals and all that. No, we're not going to do that. We, I've, I've just got the units in the box. I picked them up from uh, Lawrence, South Africa. We're going to run through them. I've also, it's the 9-inch uh, HDS Live. So, it's not the uh, 12 and the 16-inch. I'll tell you what the 12 and the 16-inch has. It has a shortcut button on the side we we're not going to have that on the nine and the seven and there's no longer a five inch unit from a from from that perspective even on the uh, ti side there's only a seven a nine and a 12 on the ti2 and uh, let's have a look at the ti2 and there's our ti2 all the goodies in the box you can see uh they already gives away a little bit we can talk about w wireless charge sharing ah there we go that's something exciting um yeah and then it's got a, a well we'll see what else it's got but um for me the big thing is wireless charting that's huge uh let's just have a look uh johan van kopenhagen uh hi johan it says will that work on carbon unit or only on the new units i presume you're talking about a uh, live scope uh or now um live imaging um me refresh my memory here uh, I better get all this terminology right live sight sorry live sight Johan um, no um, it's it's not going to work with the carbon it's only going to work with the uh, live units it's also not going to work with the TI2 it's only only um, uh, live um so yeah those are those are the things that i believe you need to know those are the things that we're going to address tonight and we're going to talk about so guys let's get on to it um first thing we, we're going to do guys here we've got the old funny how i now call it the old i mean you remember the carbon it feels like it was just released just the other day there's my office work unit carbon um as you guys all know it had a little bit of a slow start to get things sorted out but when they released software version 18.2 wow carbon things changed dramatically fantastic i absolutely love the carbon when people ask me before john what are you going to take 9 ti or 9 carbon i'd go look the screen and the resolution is fantastic but the way it works if you've got the money get the nine carbon if you're a little bit short on cash get the nine ti that changed let me tell you that changed with 18.2 that changed that unit there became just phenomenal i did a little video a little while ago maybe if we've got time we can have a glimpse at it but um, that really did work well. But guys, we want to concentrate on the, on the new stuff. Um, this is the old, um, you see again, I'm old. The, the TI hasn't been out that long. This is the 9 TI. Um, I've got one here in the box. And 
guys, it's it, it looks exactly the same. It looks exactly the same. Let me grab. I'm gonna pull this out of the box here. This is the new 9TI. There we go. Comes with a nice sun cover. On the back, it's got power, N2K, and your Exonic 9 pin plug. Now, you're thinking to yourself, hang on, if this thing's wirelessly networking to another unit, why do we still need the N2K? The point one. You have to have a point one on your boat. You cannot do without it. So the only thing this is going to be for, this plug, is to, is to connect to your XI5, to connect to your engine management, and connect to your point one. The point one is not Wi-Fi. It's not going to connect. Everything else on this unit, on the TI2, I see a lot of guys like to refer to it as TI squared. Identical. There we go. It looks exactly the same. Okay. The, to me, the, the build of it, the shape of it, the layout, everything to me looks exactly the same. The little card goes underneath here and everything looks the same. Let's power it up and have a look. I've got a little 12 volt battery here. I'm going to plug this in here like that. Here we go. We've got a little old plug in there. We're going to put that over there. We're going to power that up. Right. Let's see. Uh, I need to connect it to so you guys can see it. So let's put that over there in the background. We'll merge that in there. Um, let's use this here. We're going to turn that off there. How's that, guys? Okay, Elite 9 TR. We're going to connect to that. There's the TR2. I did cheat. I took it out the box just now. And I just wanted to make sure that it does connect Wi-Fi. It would have been one of those shocking uh, <laughs> uh, fish tech live moments if that bloody thing didn't connect. Hey, wait, that would be a nice one. Eh? Okay, then we're going to go there. We're going to go to our link app. And then it should connect. There's Elite 9, TI squared or TI2 or whatever. We're going to use it as a remote control. Let's see if we can connect. Guys, how's the audio and the resolution and everything on, on your side? It seems to look okay on mine. Um, so, yeah, let's just see how it goes. If you're having any audio issues... Um, no, my microphone is working, thank goodness. Um, or any glitches, please let me know. Okay, so we're going to go accept. There we go, we can see that. I've already put a couple of charts in there. So it says register your device. No, we're going to say remind me later. And I've already put in a derp damn chart here. Now, guys, um, from a speed perspective, a startup perspective, as you guys could see, it was quick. Um, I have compared the speed between the live and the carbon, and it's identical. I have compared the startup speed between the carbon and the TI before, and it was the same. And the way it started up now, guys, it's pretty much the same. So startup time is around that 35 seconds to 40 seconds. Um, we know some of those other brands that can take up to three minutes to start, but we, 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 we don't go down that road. Um, guys, so chart perspective, this is quite, this, this DeWerp chart is quite a complicated uh, chart. It's a complex uh, chart rather, and you know, it really challenges the, the processor. Um, I'll tell you up front, I have already used the HDS Live. I've tried it on the water. I'm going to show you a video just now, uh, which let me see if I can put it up there quickly. There's the video there. Okay, we're going to put that up just now when we talk ab about the live unit. And I can tell you that unit was blistering fast from a refresh rate on the screen and on the water. So, um, 
Uh, let me just have a look if there's any messages here. Thanks, guys. Everything seems to be looking good, all going well. Brendan Van Zadam, good evening, Brendan. Um, and good evening, everybody. Um, great, guys. So, from this perspective, everything looks okay. Obviously, I'm indoors, so there's, there, there's no GPS. But here's one of the main things that I want to show you where it changes from the old uh, TI. As you can see, the layout is completely different. They've changed everything here. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I really like about this. The menu before, and this applied to the carbon as well, eh? I found, especially in the charts, there was an unnecessary step to everything. There's always like this next step, which I didn't quite like. I'm, I'm, I must be honest. Uh, I got used to it and it was fine. But when people bought my charts for the first time, even though we put that little piece of paper in the in the box, here's your, your fish tech um, chart box. We'd have a little paper inside there with some basic instructions. Whew, it was still a little bit hectic. Uh, Vian, good evening, Vian. How are you doing? Um, okay, so there's our layout on the uh, TI. I like it. I think it's great. You want to go into your in, into your system, into your settings. It's right there on the screen. Bang. Now you guys will recognize that. Okay. All your information there. We go to about. You want to see what the software version is. 18.3. There we go. I didn't realize that had 18.3 on it. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, guys, while we're here, 18.3 is coming to the carbon. But only to the carbon. No, it's not coming to the Gen 3, unfortunately. Guys, Gen 3, still going to work, still going to be fine. But no, no more software updates, no more um, support. Let's call it support for the uh, Gen 3 going forward. But it's still going to work. It's a great unit. So, so, so don't stress too much about it. But 18.3 is a major, major upgrade. And it's coming to the carbon as well. It's just not out yet. Uh, I thought it was going to be out this week by now, but it's, it's not. But let's give them the time to get it right first. Let's not rush them because we know how that turns out. Um, little things like the screen resolution, um, 800 by 480, that's very good. Um, that's the same as the Gen 3. It's the same as the old TI. Obviously, the carbon is a much, nearly double the resolution. And the new live, also double the res nearly double the resolution. Those nine lives and nine carbons have incredibly high resolution. They're beautiful, beautiful displays. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, guys. I mean... I, I don't know what the resolution is on your side seeing the video at 720p it'll get a little bit fuzzy but like I said the YouTube video uh, video will be a hell of a lot lot better so so anyway uh, things like um, services right that part of that's been added as you can see that is something new um, this is obviously going to be to download charts from your uh, CMAP Genesis account so you're going to have to sign into that and go through that sort of thing. You're on the water. You need a chart. Boom, there you go. You get to your piece of water and there isn't a chart there. Guess what? You go on the unit. You log your data. You come off the water. The minute it links up to your home um, Wi-Fi setup, you say upload all my data to my uh, CMAP Genesis account. And boom, there it goes. Um, let it go to the uh, social map. Give it a couple of weeks, two weeks or so for South Africa. And before you know it, you go back onto that little body of water of yours. And guess what? Now you've got a chart. But guys, please compensate for the drop in water level. When you upload that data, you're going to upload it. It's going to tell you that it's uploaded. You say, thank you very much. You're going to open it on the PC in your account. You're going to open that particular log and you're going to edit it. And you're going to compensate for how many feet the dam was, was down. There's a number of ways that you can do that, um, but we're not going to talk about that, that tonight. By all means, get hold of me, see some of my old things. I've spoken about it before. There's apps for your phone. Um, we use what these uh, parasailing guys use, these paragliders and these power prop paraglider guys. It's, um, it's called Mini Vario. It's a very, very accurate um, altimeter. 
and you go to the high level mark and you take a measurement, you walk all the way down to the water edge, you mark it, you work out what the difference is in your CMAP Genesis account, you compensate for that and you're done. Navigation, we the only thing we really use here a lot is the trails. You can do all your trails here, which we know well, uh, your, your chart settings, your range rings, your heading extensions, all of that. Um, pretty much this, the, to me, there's, there's nothing really new there under settings. Waypoints is nice and quick. You can either push this button on the right hand side of the screen, which is lit up. You guys can't see it, but there's a, the, the, there's a button there. Um, or you can go to your waypoints and view your waypoints and say go to. There's alarms, there's vessels, there's information here. What is that information? Okay, that's your tides, your trip, and your sun. Okay, I know. I'll, I'll confess, it's not something I've, I've really used much. But guys, this is it. For me, I'm using cards a lot, and I'm recording information. I know there's a lot of you that do do your own structure maps and what have you. Oh, man. Do you remember going to the... Oh, that alarm is quite... I wonder if we can turn that alarm off. Mm. Settings. No GPS fix. Off. There we go. We don't have to fight with that anymore. Okay. Guys, when we're working with cards and we upload and we're uploading information to the cards and we're saving waypoints and all that type of thing. <clears throat> Man, was it a mission? You had to pages and then scroll all the way down to files. On your screen, you hit pages and immediately there, bottom left, bang, storage. Look at that. How easy is that? You've got waypoints. There's all your waypoint information. There's your sonar logs information. There's your transfer file. I'm presuming that transfer is for your CMAP Genesis um, uh, um, charts, your social map charts or, or, or whatever. But guys, this is really nice, quick, easy. Let's go to my files. My files. You'll notice waypoints, routes, and trails is missing. So I'm going to presume now if we hit, there we go. It's the big button at the top there. So that's super, super easy to get to. Your sonar logs, it'll go into your sonar logs uh, folder and they'll all be here, which is nice. That is really, really nice. And it'll tell you where they are. Are they on the card or the internal memory? Try and not record to your internal memory. Um, uh, Kim W. Hansen, good evening. Kim is all the way from Denmark. Welcome. Thank you very much for, for joining Kim and everybody else. Uh, Mark, Stephen, Rowan, Vaughan, uh, Ke uh, Scott, Charles, Danny, Milan. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Um, guys, if you missed the beginning, we are talking about the new uh, hardware coming out from, from Lawrence. We're just having a look at how this whole system looks. Um, let's go. You know what I want to do? How do we turn on? You see, we're going to learn together now. How do we turn on simulator? Hmm. Maybe it's under that. There it is there. Okay, we can turn it on there. Let's just have a look what the simulator looks like. It's, I, th I think it will be interesting. Simulate. Let's turn that on. Files. Uh, there's nothing there. Cancel. Let's go to the sonar. Let's see what we got. Okay, there's nothing. I'm going settings. We're going to go simulator files. You know what? Oh, there we go. Active imaging. There we go. Active imaging SL2. Uh, now here's something interesting i've got to stop you right i'm, I'm going to stop right here and this is the beauty of a, a live show um we talk about things like this i was recording oh no hang on that was the hds live i was recording in sl3 and we had some issues with the recording in, in sl3 no the sl3 is predominantly because of the 3d this is not 3d this is active imaging so this will only be an sl2 file so that's right sl2 there we go we're gonna hit save let's have a look what that sl2 looks like okay there we go there's our simulator the first thing i want to bring up here <clears throat> i find this a little bit strange 
you've now got mode right up on the top right hand side of the screen and you've got your different modes I've got a feeling these guys with 18.3 are putting a little bit more ingenuity into the different modes whereas before the modes were really just a very it, it, it was like a beginner's tool um, if you didn't really understand the unit and you didn't really know how to set the unit up it it was a way of um, doing things basic things quickly um, I'm going to do a little bit more homework on this uh, modes and see how does it change now um, can we customize each one because that's my question I don't want to use somebody else's general shallow fresh whatnot could we take different types of fishing that let's say you like to do some some shallow then you like to do a little bit of fast trolling you like to do a little bit of slow trolling you're in very clear water <coughs> excuse me um gee. excuse me everybody sure i'm hoping that we can customize these modes so if we go back here well, well let's have a look at it let's change your color line to 270 for example we're on fresh mode that's 70 what happens if we go back to shallow does it change no it doesn't it stays the same i thought you could go um let's say we go deep and we're going to go back we're in now deep mode we want to change our frequency to 50 kilohertz uh, or low chirp let's use low chirp <coughs> There's our low chirp because we're in deep water. Will it, when we go shallow, will it automatically take us back? No, no, it doesn't. Okay, well, that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping that it would do that. But guys, let's not rule it out. The fact that it's up there tells me, hang on, something's going on here. Why have they made that front, front forward? Um, right, let's have a look here. Uh, Vasilis Garitsos, uh, uh, apologies for my pronunciation, Valisis. Uh, Vasilis, uh, Greece is with you. Thank you very much. Thanks for, for joining us. Uh, Rimvedas, uh, greetings from Lithuania. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Dario Guna, thanks for the info. Hello from Turkey. Hello, geez, we got everybody here tonight. This is fantastic. Uh, Jeff Beard, um, how can I download it? What's it take? Um, Jeff, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a bit of a shot at this, and I'm going to say um, you're talking about 18.3, the software. Uh, if you are referring to that, it's not out yet. It's not officially out. It's coming out. Well, obviously, I've just pulled this uh, TI out the box. Uh, when I pull that uh, live. I'll check if that is, but I presume it is because that's using active imaging. And the big thing about 18.3 is active imaging. So obviously that's going to have it as well, but we'll double check it. But for you and me, the average Joe on the street who wants to go to the Lawrence.com website and download the new software, we're going to have to wait for the um, uh, information saying it's now available. Uh, need reset button down. Uh, hello, Rook, Roy Elovara. Uh, need reset button down. Uh, I, you'll have to explain that one a little bit more, if you don't mind. Um, right. So, 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 guys, yeah. Um, let's 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 wait and see what the story is about this mode. Uh, right, because they've made to put it on the top right hand side of the screen means it's a very very important thing. But we still can't customize uh, the individual settings for that. But my guess is, when it's got a transducer connected and it's on the water, it is going to do it. I suspect it's not doing it because we're in simulation mode. So for now, don't take that as gospel, but that's what I'm guessing. And I think it's a pretty good guess. Uh, Ashley Davis Taylor, uh, Taylor, good evening, good evening, welcome. Uh, Clint Gesling, good evening. Uh, talking about changing modes, shallow water versus general. Clint, like I said, uh, good evening, Clint. Uh, Clint, like I said before, um, 
these mode things this is a like a shortcut to so if you don't understand what um, um, the frequencies the sensitivity is and the color lines and all that does if you like oh no i don't understand what that's all about but i'm in deep water bang you go deep the unit is going to read the transducer it's going to see what capabilities the, tr the transducer's got it'll give you the best um, um, settings for deep application with the transducer you have connected i think i've answered my own question there earlier about this mode thing and then it will sort it out from from there um your fast troll it should change the scroll speed of the uh, screen um the, your slow troll anyway these this is something i'd like to do on the water i'm going to make a note for myself to test this on the water and see if this actually works because this would be really really nice especially for somebody that does multi-facet type fishing the guy this week is out at sea fishing wrecks in deep deep water on the weekend he's got the kids on the boat and they fishing for bass and what and now they're shallow it's a very quick setup so he doesn't have to personally go back and set things up for me personally the first thing i do when i get on the water if i'm in more than eight feet of water i'm either going to change to medium chirp or 83 kilohertz medium chirp depending on the on, on the transducer that is the first thing that, that i'm going to do so i'll go medium chirp uh, i'm going to go to advanced and my ping speed all that i'm going to leave like that noise rejection low surface clarity low that's all fine but where's my view it's under there we go under more options and the first thing I do is I change from pallet 1 to pallet 13. And I know I've discussed this many times before, but pallet 13 is, as far as I'm concerned, is the business. It's, it, it enhances the arches, especially on downscan. Um, let me just have a look. The option is on the bottom. Uh, talking about changing mode, shallow water versus general. Uh, he says the option is on the bottom. Clint, I don't know if we're on the same. General is general is not changing these options down here. If 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 that's what what you're referring to, uh, that matter. Okay, let me see. Maybe someone else can can help us here. John in Crystal Denzel. Hello from USA. Hello, John. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. Um, uh, thanks, John. Very kind of you. Uh, Roke Roy says that mode shallow when you change color line and one settings back push reset button. So let, let's try that. I'm going to go general. Reset mode general. Let's go shallow. Reset mode deep okay all that that thanks thanks for that thanks for telling me about that um yeah all that does is whatever the, i still think for each one of these you can make a custom setting that's why they've put it up in the top right hand side of of the screen so you can customize each one that what you said there uh, reset mode just means whatever settings you've made for each individual mode you're going to reset to default. Guys, um, are, are we on the same page there? Uh, Tony Mavrov, good evening. Mode change, mode reset on bottom. Boom. You type like my boys do. I have no idea what they're saying. Okay. Um, I guess that, that answered your, your question. He says, I understand. Okay, cool. Sorted. Um, let's go back um guys there's a little bit of a delay on my uh, chat feed so if it looks like i'm a bit retarded it's just that it's coming up a bit later so and then i might have answered something that you've discussed anyway but let's let's see how how it goes okay so so basically from a sonar perspective voila uh, it, it all looks pretty much normal this mode thing i think is something we need to spend some time on the water with um because like I said, it's unusual that it's up here, if, you know, front, top right hand side of, of, of the screen. So we're going to look at that. But 
I want to have a look at, we want to go more options down. Hello. Oh no, guys, watch this. Very, very important. Do you remember how we used to get to down scan or now fish, fish reveal? Fish reveal is an awesome, awesome option because it takes, it saves us one panel. It takes your sonar and it puts it into the same panel as your uh, down scan. But look at the new units. You've got to tap down scan. There we go. Now we got it. Okay. Guys, the first thing you need to do here, and this is very, very serious. You're going to go fish reveal options. Change palette from 1 to 13. Now, I know that's not going to make a big difference on the simulator because it's a simulator. It's not a real life situation. Every single person that uses this for the first time and says, John, my fish reveal is not working right. I tell them, first check that it's on. Yes, it's on. Fish reveal options and change the palette from 1 to 13. Boom. It changes. It just pops. And it, it's just so much clearer. You see those fish in the grass. You see those fish in the trees. I mean, it's just awesome. I want to show you something quickly. Guys, imagine just for a second, okay? Just, just for a second. Imagine if we had this, this screenshot here is probably one of the most well-known screenshots on Google. If you go uh, Lawrence Downscan in the Google search, that image is going to come up several times. I actually took that. I took that screenshot the very, very first time I got to use it. We had a unit coming to South Africa early. Liz Plotz gave it to myself and uh, James uh, Van Royen and said, you guys go and test this thing, it's brand new. And we all knew about Hummingbird side scan. What's the big deal? And we said, down scan? We don't know down scan, but let's see what that's about. And we drove down to Libby Bay in um, uh, James's VX70, and we came off the plane, and we put this thing on, and we drove over this tree. And that is what we saw. No settings made, no setting change, that is what we saw. It just blew our minds with what we saw. Now, just imagine if you had fish reveal here and you could see the fish, where they're sitting on that drop off, where they're sitting in that tree, where they're sitting on the thermocline. That is the beauty of fish reveal. So yeah, that really is a, yeah, just imagine that. But while we're on this picture, just look on the bottom left hand side of the screen. You see it says 800 kilohertz. Guys, I just want to tell you something. The old LSS-1, you remember the short original uh, LSS-1? That was a true 455 and 800 kilohertz transducer. It had a 455 and it had an 800 kilohertz element for left, right and down. That was the difference. Um, you know, later when uh, Hummingbird came with uh, down imaging, they never had a down element. They took the left and the right and they photo the used software on the unit to Photoshop it like together. And yeah, no, it was just a. And then Garmin did it later. They still do it today, believe it or not. But that was just a disaster. Um, but then came the LSS2 HD. Guys, I'm telling you now. The LSS2 never had an 800 kilohertz element in it. I've argued with Lawrence themselves. I've, I've put my foot down and I said, there's no LSS2 in that. Ach, I mean, there, there's no 800 kilohertz in the LSS2. Came the total scan. Sure, you can select 800 kilohertz, but all it does is it contrasts the screen. It's not true 800 kilohertz. Um, the 3D came out. Same thing. I still don't know what the frequency is on the 3D. I'm guessing it's around that 400 to 500, 600 maybe, somewhere around there. I think, I don't know for sure, because you can't select it. But, guys, active imaging. Where is it? Where is the picture of it? There's no picture of it on here. 
But guys, active imaging, this thing that's just come out now, the new active imaging transducer, it looks identical to the, to the total scan. It's only a little bit longer. It's about a centimeter or so longer, but it looks exactly the same. That has 800 kilohertz elements in it, and it is unbelievable. The clarity that I've seen on the water, I'm going to show you a short video just now. Look at our time. It's, it's already 20 to 8. I can't believe it. But the quality on that is unbelievable. Let me just quickly check who's here. Hi from Sydney, Dermot Smelligan, uh, Halligan. Hello, Dermot. Welcome, welcome. Chase Dale, don't care about this. Just tell me why my down imaging is blank. Um, that's pretty cryptic, Chase. Uh, don't care about this. Just tell me about my down imaging is blank. You get all sorts, eh? All sorts. Um, you, you're going to have to... After the show, maybe contact me, send me some screenshots. Let's try and work that, that out for you. But now's not the time to sort out your installation problems. But, but we will sort it out. Don't worry. Uh, Mikko Laxo, uh, hi, good evening. Fernando Brown, sorry, I don't know what you say. <laughs> Fernando, good evening. Uh, thanks for the, for the comment. Um, uh, Clint is there, Fernando, uh, Kim, Danny. Before, before long, it will tell you what type of fish and the lure you use geez Danny yeah you you never know eh? but you know what as long as the the fish has still got a choice to bite or not then I think it's still fishing eh? um we we probably don't have have, have the time time for it but I've, I've got to tell you this guys this technology is killing me it's absolutely killing me in the old days when I went fishing I didn't catch any fish I said, I'd come home, tell my wife, or back then, whoever, there were no fish. No fish. I'm a good fisherman. If there were fish, I'd catch them. Guys, the technology on these sonars are so good now. You see the fish. You see how they're behaving. You see what structure they're relating to. How are they relating to that structure? Let me tell you, with this new life site that's going to come out next, you're going to see exactly how those fish are moving. Uh, the very big fish will obviously be able to differentiate species, as we've seen. But certainly the smaller ones, the way they behave, uh, is going to give you a very good indication as to the species. Um, and guys, that's the terrible part. The units are so great now. The fish are all going, hi, hi. We're here. Look at us. And you can't catch them. It hurts the heart, man. Because you know what it tells me? I'm a terrible fisherman. How? Oh. Anyway, I've got to work on that side of the thing. The electronics game is just going up and up and up and up. And my fishing is just going down and down and down. I need to get back to fishing. Huh? Um, right. Uh, John, uh, John in Crystal Detzel says, so the new 3-in-1 transducer is a great one. John, it certainly is. Um, guys, this active imaging transducer, there's a 3-in-1, there's a 2-in-1. Um, I don't really see anybody ever really going for the 2-in-1 because you still got to have your normal 2D sonar next to it. Just forget about that. Concentrate on 3-in-1. The 3-in-1 is going to come to the carbon. It is going to work with now we refer to it as the old carbon. How sad is that? What a beautiful machine. <clears throat> but it, with software 18.3, it will work with the carbon. So yes, uh, Mike Callan says, so is the new active imaging better than 3D? Mike, it is. It is. Um, it's actually quite shocking. Um, I'll show a video just now how are we doing on time 1941 guys it is absolutely brilliant it it really and truly it it works like a charm you know what i don't think i'm even gonna have a chance to connect the hds live unit up um but i'll show you a bit of a video quickly uh just now um who else we got here good evening everybody all the new guys coming in fantastic right let me get back to uh, you know what? I forgot to change the screen over. I've been talking away. I forgot to change the screen over. There we go. Um, okay, so we we spoke about that's changed. Um, what we want to do is what can we do with, with custom panels here? I want to know, can we add more than two charts? For the nine and the seven inch units, not really going to be applicable. Um, but for the 12 and especially the 16, 
there you might want to squeeze in three charts put a sediment a satellite contour uh, a, a mosaic whatever and and if we try and bring in another one unfortunately it, it it doesn't do it we can't do it i did try it with the 12 inch unit it can't do it um maybe it just slows the unit down too much but your custom layouts let's see what happens if we bring in four panels like that now you see that that has changed completely guys that panel there i wanted years ago i wanted side scan at the wall at the bottom i wanted sonar uh, let's take that out let's take that out i wanted side scan um sonar dance down scan you see what well, we don't even need to do that anymore because because we, we we've got fish reveal so you don't need those two panels anymore so you but that if uh, anybody that bought my last book fisherman's guide to sonar 2 that was the layout that i effectively dreamed of i said that's what we need that is the panel that 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 we need now now that we've got fish reveal we don't really need that we can take that out completely and we can go that route and put our side scan down there we've got our down scan or rather put the charts on that side um, let's go save see what that looks like and voila there you go there you go um, fantastic you know you can sweep that out the way there we go let's have a look what happens under our power button guys this is the power button um, let's just see mike callahan says i have a carbon 12 can i just buy the new transducer yes you can mike uh get the active imaging three in one but like i said you're gonna have to be patient uh we're all waiting for 18.3 the software but that's what what you're going to need unfortunately but guys let's have a look at this has also changed we're looking at the power button what can we do with the power button things have changed here from the power button you can go to your settings we couldn't do that before now you can let's go back to your power uh what else have we got here brightness night mode touch lock wireless we've got ah that's nice we can do all our connect to the internet connect to okay that's pretty cool but here's one that i really like who remembers what a mission it, it was to record sonar if you were there and you wanted to record sonar it was a little bit of a mission to get there not anymore hit your power button bang bottom right log sonar as easy as that so yes that's that really is a great great feature but i want to show you something for me the biggest biggest thing about the ti2 this is just too cool go to wireless can you spot it look right at the top of the of the page up an edge excuse me connect with another elite ti2 guys that is such an awesome feature that really really and truly is an unbelievable feature we could never share charts or sonar on the ti before the old the original ti there it is didn't have ethernet how do we share charts how do we share sonar on the hds we share it via ethernet the live has also got ethernet you can't do sharing with wi-fi on the live it's only on the ti2 now guys that is very very cool very cool that means you can put a chart into your one ti2 turn on this at the top here where it says connect with another elite ti2 not only can you share the charts but you can also share the sonar most of us don't do that anymore because you've got your dedicated sonar on the front you've got your dedicated sonar at the back but if there was a time where you wanted to do that especially now with the whole dual channel thing you wanted to view two different parts of the boat at the same time boom you can do it with with this uh, wi-fi sharing so for for the guys that use charts i know charts can get expensive um if you got my full set of charts you guys know it's a chunk of change um 
to have to buy a second one to put on the front unit is expensive most guys don't do it they just take a chance and pull it out the one and you're always running that risk of dropping that thing in the water hey and that's an expensive lesson I just shame a couple of guys have done that and oh it, it hurts me to tell the guy that I can't just give him another one he's got to buy another one it, it, it kills me I hate those phone calls but unfortunately it's like anything it's like any software today you drop your CD overboard with your latest music you go back to macro and say hey I dropped my CD overboard why don't you give me another CD eh, eh, baba. yeah buy a new one this works exactly the same um Johan van Kaufmannachen says they must add that log sonar to the 18.3 update. Yes, I think it's going to do it, Johan. Um, at least I hope it is. I really and truly hope that 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 they do that. But uh, guys, let's wait and and, and see. Um, Yo, look at this time, guys. I want to run through this video quickly. This was. Um, this was using the HDS Live. Uh, we popped onto um, Inanda Dam, myself and John Minnie from uh, Bismont Trading, also known as Lower in South Africa. And immediately, immediately, just the clarity. Let me fast forward this video a little bit here. There we go. There we go. Guys, on my. On my Hummingbird Mega, I've got this type of resolution. I can get this type of resolution. And it, it gave me a little bit of FOMO that I couldn't achieve it with my Lawrence before. Even with the 3D, I just couldn't get this type of resolution. But guys, just have a look at that on the left-hand side of, of the screen there. That, with my, with, with my Mega, by 45 feet, 50 feet, it goes black. Because it's running at... 1, 000, nearly 1,200 uh, uh, kilohertz or 1.2 megahertz. It's very, very high. The, it, you know, it, you get incredible clarity, but you haven't got the punch. Lawrence has somehow taken 800 kilohertz, given this incredible range. It's come at a, but it's got clarity all the way out to 100 feet. We pushed it to 120 feet, and it was then it started to get a little bit fuzzy at 120 feet but geez 120 feet for 800 kilohertz is very very good it's come at a little bit of a price you've probably already noticed it if you're looking at the screen right now there's those old ghost lines can you see you've got the black water which is your um, water column and then it hits the bottom and then it's clear and then it's got those dark bands there Guys, that was a thing we had with the old LSS-1 on 800 kilohertz. I don't know if you remember that. It was, it was something that we eventually didn't even see anymore. For guys like me that, that create charts, it's a little bit of a mission. Because I, I don't want that, um, those, those lines. But while you're on the water, you're driving around and you're looking for stuff, it's just crystal clear. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And something I want to tell you, I want to see if I can fast forward this a little bit. Um, you'll see just now when we get on top of these rocks uh, on, on this video, we stop. Now, generally, if you stop or you're on a very slow drift, your side scan just becomes this big, long streak of nothing. Not with active imaging. The minute you put the slightest movement, I'm talking about 0.1 kilometers per hour or a slight turn on your trolling motor, bang, it, is, it just goes sharp. So that was a shock for me to see how, what a tiny amount of movement cleared that side scan up beautifully. Right, uh, whoever missed you, uh, Miguel, good evening. Uh, Tony Hutkinson, uh, hi, hi Tony, how are you doing? John, uh, what transducer was used with that? Um, John, I presume you're talking about this here. This was the two-in-one. We actually didn't even have a three-in-one here. Uh, this is the two-in-one transducer. You can see on the side. Jeez, can you guys see that fish on the left-hand side of the screen there? I just saw that now for the first time. You see how I get distracted. Still got fish in my blood, even though I spend all my time mapping now. But um, uh, yeah, <clears throat> let's see, where were we? 
so this was the two-in-one uh, transducer uh, for the side scan and obviously in the middle I was using a TM1 150. <clears throat> uh, Mike says he loves the setup. Yes, no, it's awesome. Mate. It really is fantastic. Uh, John says, when is Lawrence anything like the live scope from Garmin? John, uh, it's coming. It's coming in the next three, three to four months. Uh, we, we, we should have it. I would give it six months for a little bit of teething, but uh, it's, it's, it's here. Uh, it's definitely uh, on its way. Um, like I showed the guys just now. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Live sight. Can you see that? Live sight. Coming soon. That's the business right there. Um, <clears throat> uh, John uh, Detzel says, uh, do you get an image just like the bottom center? Uh, John, this bottom center, jeez, I put this, I put this video up on a couple of forums and on Facebook and everyone was very excited about active imaging, but this center bottom, everybody was very excited. These are our Fishtech HD charts. <coughs> These are, yeah, our Fishtech HD charts uh, where we go and record the data, we put it together, it's a painstaking task. And yeah, we, we create fish tech. Uh, I can proudly say we create the best charts in the world. Not just for any one uh, like mosaic or whatever, but it's a combination of things. We use drones, we use shoreline imagery, we use all sorts of amazing things, which certainly does make a big difference. Just to show you, um, if we go to chart here, uh, we go to more options, Let's go to Ultra HF. There's our Ultra HF. Um, I don't know if you can see that. This damn De Hoop has got a lot of trees, which actually made life quite difficult. Um, but we get really great resolution. Uh, you can see this nice little bit of tree there you can see this little shadow there uh got a nice little oh hang on you can't see it hang on let me go back sorry guys she's yeah i'm going all over the place and you guys can't see what i'm talking about i, I hadn't switched it over my my apologies we're here on on the whip dam um yeah these are my charts here and then you've got a whole lot of things you've got satellite that's when the dam was full, set up 2012, when the dam was, was low. Can you see how awesome this is here? This is a satellite image of the dam before it was even built, before the dam wall was even built. You can see there was an old rondavel there. We go to the Ultra HF, bang, there it is there. You can see there's a little bit of shadow there on the side. What does that tell you? There's a brush in there, or a little bit of tree in there. So, you know, these type of things, watch out for the shadows. Uh, so that's what uh, center bottom is all about. Well, there, now it's over there. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, uh, Mike Callan says, is 18.3 update going to bring this type of screen to carbons? Yes, Mark, 18.3. Uh, uh, oh, hang on. If you're asking about the screen layout and the power button option and the new menu, I don't know. <coughs> I must be honest, I don't know. Uh, I know it's going to incorporate active imaging, but I don't know. I'm not too sure. Um, we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, the science scan looks like birds now, very sweet. Yes, Mike Callan, yes, it does. The, the, the side scan, let me just change that back again. Like you said, guys, this speed here, we are basically stationary. We are basically stationary. We were busy fishing at the time. Johan from Copenhagen, I think, was... No, who was? No, 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 sorry, it was John Minnie. It was John Minnie. I thought it was Johan that was with me. Um, but we were barely moving. And yeah, there we go. It just pops. It really is fantastic. But, Mike Callahan, here's the important part. The birds on mega imaging dies at 40, 45 feet. It goes black. There's, there's nothing there. You can't see anything. These things are running at 100 feet, even 120 feet, 800 kilohertz is still working. So, it really, really is awesome. Have you got fork images? Um, Mike, no, not offhand, if I'm, if I'm correct with what you're saying. 
Uh, Carl Lewis says, is there any chance of 360 imaging for Lawrence? Carl, to be honest, 360 is a casting tool. It's a thing that says you already know there's a rock there. Your charts have told you the rock is there. All it does is it assists you in getting the correct range and angle on your cast. It's a blurry, messy thing. Let's, let's just be honest. Um, there's a lovely thing coming up now. There we go. You know, it really is a bit of a blurry, uh, terrible blurry thing. Live sight is going to be different. We're hoping that live sight obliterates 360, to be honest. Because, yes, I use 360, but I hate that it's so blurry and there's nothing you can do about it. To see a rock clear, it's just about got to be a hot, the, the size of my little office here for it to be clear. And that's just such a pity. It really and truly is. So live sight is... We're putting a lot of chips into live site. That's, that's what we're really, really hoping for. Um, guys, the other thing I wanted to show you very, very quickly. That was the cover. Sorry, Liz. The, this is the old LSS2 bracket. Jeez, we're out of time. This is the old LSS2 bracket. This is the new active imaging bracket good news that old plastic thing is gone hey i feel so sorry for so many guys that lost their transducers with that thing they back to the stainless steel which is fantastic and you can put it onto your old lss2 bracket so you don't need to remove the whole thing just take the little screws out of your lss2 if you still got an old lss2 just remove it or if you've got uh although you still want to use the 3d don't take that 3d off just yet because there's, there's there's certainly a place for it um uh, but yeah there we go it's exactly the same uh, bracket so the active imaging screw straight onto the um old lss2 bracket guys i said to you uh mike Callan says 360 has too many, many ways of getting interference yeah even when <coughs> excuse me mike even when you got the 360 set up perfectly like what i have it's still blurry horrible horrible blurry and oh man you know maybe back in the day when it was the first time we ever saw it it was all exciting and that but now it's just plain boring and irritating is hummingbird going to bring out a new 360 ah now there's a question wait and see um guys for the south african guys i said i would uh uh, do some quick offers this is only for south africa um, guys we've got the very very last we've got a brand spanking new carbon 9 um, available it's going for 26,900 rand it's an absolute steal it's the last one available in the country if you don't own a carbon please get a carbon you can always put a live on later we're gonna have years of support with the live but if anyone desperate for a carbon grab it now we've also got a seven carbon going for 16,900 rand grab that that's also available um now i want to talk about something now how does the price differ between this unit that we've got here the ti2 i'm talking about nine inch units now a nine inch ti2 compared to the old nine ti guys we are looking at a six no, not even. It's about a five and a half thousand rand price difference. But guys, keep in mind, if you had to upgrade the transducer alone, the transducer alone is going to cost you more than that. So for the so for less than the price of a transducer, you're going to get a nine TI two with this wireless link, eighteen point three extended. Uh, um, you know with the software updates all the new stuff that's going to be coming out you know this is fresh it's new it's it's really ti2 and the live units the live units i think are going to have a little bit of a i think we need to give them just a little bit of time we we found a couple of issues while we were on the water 
but it's going to be a software update here and a software update there and they'll tweak it and they'll sort those little issues out um so far tonight with the uh, ti2 i don't know if you guys noticed but there were no issues it ran perfectly um uh, let me just have a look uh Roke says yes steel is only right bracket 100 percent right geez that plastic bracket was a shocker um mike callan says i have the total scan now i can't imagine how much better active is it's 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 fantastic it really and truly is uh john crystal says speaking of interference why are so many loan students getting interference when the xi5 is 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 uh running john it's a very good question that i also get it with my hummingbird on the mincota uh had exactly the same issues before and then you had to put a choke in and you had to earth it and all those type of things it's exactly the same thing here's the part that i don't understand why does motor guide not put a little earth inside the cable up the shaft and put it as a little lug on the outside saying this is your earth put this onto the negative pole of your motor or a common negative to your batteries or whatever they don't do that i tell you what somebody needs to get down to motor guide especially particularly motor guide and say guys wake up wow motor guide is just i don't know i don't know if they've just run into a wall and just stuck there or i don't know what the problem is but motor guide please you you, you really need to up, up your game we've got problems with the xi5 um it's a nightmare to do a software update on it there's two dongles in the whole of south africa or one dongle um it, yeah guys it's just really tough motor guide you need to up your game big time and please put our earth in in the motor it'll help a hell of a lot of us but um yeah so guys there's the specials there's the new stuff i was hoping to do so much more i think we need to do a two hour show <laughs> but um the new let me just change this here Put that there, there we go. Uh, no we need to sorry guys right um guys i think that's all that that we've got oh man let me just turn that off sorry it's one of these live things so guys there you have it the the new technology is all here uh we're going to see some wonderful software updates we're going to get some new features uh look these guys it's, connecting your phone to the thing and all that it's not really something i'm very into um is it nice to get notified in some cases yes uh so i'm not going to concentrate too much on that aspect of things but there's a lot of features especially on those big uh, live units uh like the 12 and the 16 there are some really awesome little features there that we're going to look into i know there's a remote coming out as well i don't know if the remote is going to be compatible with the ti2 i don't know but i know it's definitely going to be compatible with the live the seven and the nine inch unit so that's a nice little thing you put a remote around your neck that i see the use of that that's an awesome tool uh, so so let's see what what comes from um this new generation because it is the live and the ti2 is the next generation and here we are uh, and it's still early days so let's learn together um, as I learn stuff I will put it on my fish tech uh, uh, Lawrence Facebook page and I'll share it with you guys and yeah I will see you guys next month that'll be December the second week of December most of you will probably be on holiday by then um, I'm sure I'll be around and let's see what we can talk about next um, for all of you that joined us this evening uh, thank you very much we had an awesome turnout tonight we had a really international uh, bunch of guys join and I just want to say thank you very much to everybody you had great questions I um, apologize if I missed a couple I know the feed was going quite quick and I might have missed a couple of things but guys you 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 are just awesome and thank you very much for for joining me i'll see you guys next month uh, fish tech live season two it'll be the last one of the year 
uh, episode 11. Good evening, everybody.